Google. No, not ChatGPT, not some other AI, just plain old reliable Google. We've all been there with an estimated 8.5 billion searches every single day and starting out originally over 25 years ago. That's a long time. It turns out that many people don't know how to take full advantage of this search engine. So in this video, I'll show you various tips, tricks and hidden commands. So with that, let's begin. So if you want to search for a specific site, for example, you should try using site colon followed by the website name. This will give search results in Google that are from that site and and that site only as you can see by this example if i type apple.com i get only results from apple.com but if i then add let's say iphone all the results will be regarding iphone related results that are directly from the apple website next up is similar to the last and this is to do with omitting sites i don't know what it is but recently there seems to be some sort of partnership that's been going on in regards to google and reddit it seems that whenever you search for stuff you seem to get a lot more reddit threads being shown as the top result because of this by using the minus symbol followed by the site so reddit.com in this case you'll get results that aren't from reddit it's not just reddit either if there are particular sites that you want to appear or not appear then you can use this and the previous tip that i mentioned to do this what's also quite useful is the quotations feature by putting your search term in quotation marks you can explicitly search for a particular word and make sure that that term is 100 percent included in the results that are provided again using the previous tips alongside this one could be quite useful for some specific searching especially when searching for research papers or academic articles talking about research and academic papers next up is Google Scholar. Yep, that's the retention graph for this video gone completely. You can access this by simply going to Google and typing for Google Scholar. This is a specific Google search engine for academic research and papers. When you search in here and get results, you can then organize the search results by various filters that you can see on the left. So you might find that useful alongside the advanced search as well, if you're in need of some extra fine tuning in regards to the results provided. Moving back into the comfort zone of regular Google search now, you can actually use the file type term in the search bar to search for results with specific file types. For example, if there's a certain PDF manual you need to find, you can just type file type and then semicolon PDF in order to provide you with only results that contain PDFs. This also works on images too. So if you want to find a PNG, for example, with a transparent background or an SVG graphic that can be scaled easily, you can type those formats instead. Note that when searching for image file types, you won't get any results in the search area as PNG and SVG are picture file types. So you'll need to go to the images tab for this. As you can see by my example, I'll only find PNGs here, all with the checkered background which indicates transparency and same goes for svgs too as you can see here if you want a specific resolution though and aspect ratio you can specify this using the image size operator which will allow you to search for a specific resolution and thus aspect ratio as well which might be handy if you want the quality of an image to be at a certain threshold for example as you can see here by my searching of bananas likewise on the topic of images you can search google by image too which surprisingly people often forget about on desktop and are quick to open google lens on their phone instead so instead you can click this icon which will open up a shelf where you can upload a file, paste an image URL to search with, or simply drag into the shelf to upload from your device. As you can see here, by dragging and dropping a DaVinci Resolve icon into the Google image search, it will provide me with results and images that are directly related to what I entered, and likewise for any image that you paste in here really. That leads nicely into the tool section. As you can see here in the images page, which allows you to refine the results further by size, color of the image, usage rights, the type, as well as a time period in which it was uploaded as some of the key controls. And in the normal search page, you'll also find controls on the time when articles were published and even an option for advanced search as well, which leads into my next tip. Now the advanced search, if you click on this option, which you can also access from the main Google page as well, by the way, in the bottom right corner, you'll notice that many of the aspects that I've mentioned previously are all in this one location within the big menu, as well as a few other controls, such as on language, region, and last updated as well. Though, there are certainly some hidden commands that are not even in the advanced search. For example, using the in URL command will produce results that have the word that you specify that is directly in or part of the URL. Similarly, using the in title term will produce results that specifically mention the word you specify in the title of the article, not necessarily in the main text though. So as you can see here in this example, I'm searching for Nintendo and then I'm specifying the word switch that needs to be part of the URL. And finally, the title of the article or page needs to have the word Mario inside as well. And when I hit search, all the results hit the criteria that I specified. Though the last feature was a bit niche, what you'll definitely find useful is using the related operator. By using this operator, you can find related sites to the one that you enter in the search box. So if I use it with Trivago, the travel website, for example, I'll get similar sites to Trivago, such as Travel Nest and Kayak, as well as an article which literally covers alternatives to Trivago. This could be useful in certain applications when combining this operator with some of the previous tips that I mentioned. And on the subject of 
operators, you can also use the AND keyword alongside the OR keyword to search for two terms together or individually. So for example, by typing Evernote and OneNote, I'm going to only get results which mention both of these apps together. So in this case, it's most likely going to be a comparison website. Or I could use the OR operator, as you can see in this example. So I'll only get results that compare Evernote to OneNote, as well as articles that compare Evernote to Notion, but not Notion and OneNote. I hope that makes sense. Talking about filtering stuff, if you want to filter, let's say some products between 600 and and $1,000, you can simply put, well, in my example, phones between and then the two numbers with three dots between them. This way, the results you get will all be between the two numbers that you mentioned. This way, you don't have to mess around with further filters and settings in regards to fine tuning your results. As you can see, just by updating the numbers in the search bar, my results change accordingly too. Now, if you want to play it a bit rogue or just want a variety of somewhat relevant results, you can use the asterisk key in order to find results that match what you search for or will fill in the blank for you. For example, if I search for Samsung Galaxy Asterix Ultra, I'll get results for the S20, S21, S22, S23 and S24 Ultra for example as that's what would fit and make sense within the asterisks. And to round things off just a broad tip really and that's the fact that you can use Google for basically anything. This could be to track a flight for example, flipping a coin, what a sports score is right now, timers, calculators, conversions, Google Translate, finding out when all the national holidays are, stock prices, rolling a die, I can't lie this one was kind of cool and being able to add loads of different dice and roll them all at once, random number generation, providing a metronome, definition, and the list just goes on and on. So yeah, that covers Google, but you'll likely want to increase your knowledge on Google Chrome now. If so, then click this video right here, which goes into several tips and tricks. Anyway, like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.